webcasting from CNN10.com, podcasting on iTunes, and now available at YouTube.com slash CNN10, this is CNN10. I'm Carl Azus, presenting our last show of the year. After today, we're scheduled to be back on January 6th, 2020. As we produced this show, the United Kingdom was awaiting the results of a national election. The biggest issue on the table is one you've heard about, the Brexit, the British exit from the European Union. Britons voted to leave the 28-member union in the summer of 2016, but it's such a complicated process with such deep political divisions over it that it hasn't been completed yet. In October, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson called for the election that took place yesterday. He's hoping his party, the Conservative Party, will win enough seats to push through his Brexit agreement with the European Union. The main opposition party, the Labour Party, wants to hold another vote on Brexit. There are other issues here, too. According to the Reuters news agency, Prime Minister Johnson wants the British government to spend more on education, law enforcement, and health care. Labor leader Jeremy Corbyn wants more spending on government services and higher taxes on Britons with higher incomes. Going into the election, the polls indicated that the Conservatives had the lead. CNN.com will have the latest on how Britain's vote went. The European Space Agency is taking steps toward cleaning up a junkyard, the one that surrounds and orbits Earth. Since the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite in 1957, people have sent a lot of stuff into orbit and beyond, and they've left behind a lot of junk in the process. In fact, European scientists say that if we quit launching stuff into space altogether, and we won't, the amount of space junk will still increase because of existing pieces smashing into each other. Clear Space One is the name of a mission that will use a four-armed robot in an effort to clean up space. It'll be on the hunt for part of a European rocket that was left in space in 2013. If everything works as planned, the robot will target the rocket part, latch onto it, and then re-enter Earth's atmosphere where everything will burn up. And if the mission's a success, more like it will be planned for bigger objects. This won't happen soon though. The official launch date is set for 2025. But with so much garbage floating around up there, the Clear Space founder says there are more than 3,000 failed satellites in orbit. Supporters say the time is right for projects like this and the others in development worldwide. The more we rocket into the heavens, three, two, one, lift off. The more junk and debris we leave behind, making it more dangerous for our spaceships and our satellites to move around. The good news, we can clean it up. In the heart of Tokyo, just a few miles away from this park on a quiet street, one company is trying to make space a little safer by making it a little cleaner. Imagine space for a second. It looks something like this, right? Not quite. According to space whizzes like this guy, hi Tim, this is more like it. A world surrounded by broken satellites, old rockets and spaceship fragments, and, well, just junk. You wouldn't believe there are thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of space debris up there. Over 170 million pieces, according to some estimates. Some are big, others small, most are really small. The small one is like a paint flex. But don't let size fool you. In space, the smallest thing can have a catastrophic impact. Those flecks move at an average of 40,000 kilometers an hour. And when they hit, they hit with the force of a hand grenade. Imagine that times 170 million. Naoko Yamazaki, Japan's second female astronaut, has seen the impact of this stuff firsthand. If the space debris size is bigger than one centimeter. Less than a dime. It will go through the structure, so it is a risk. That means dime-sized debris could destroy a spaceship. But junk isn't just a problem for astronauts. It impacts everyone on Earth, too. Intelligence gathering, electric grids. Just look at the GPS on your phone. That's why Mickey wants to make space clean again. Step one, map the mess. Agencies like NASA track the big trash. But right now, no one's really looking out for the small pieces. While Satellite 1 maps the small stuff, Satellite 2, nicknamed Elsa D, will sweep up the big stuff. Really? Just magnets? Mickey's team will launch the satellite as close to the selected piece of junk as possible. Special cameras and sensors will get even closer, and magnets will do the rest. 
Then, it'll be all programmed to come back to Earth, where it will burn up on re-entry. If all goes according to plan, Astroscale will send the first demo sweeper up in 2019. And from there, companies can hire their own ELSA to sweep up whatever might be in their way. Big international agencies, like the European Space Agency, have also started developing ideas to clean up space. But Astroscale is the world's first private company giving it a try, because it believes we will become ever more dependent on space. Someday, you know, people will probably go to Mars or more further place. And let's not forget space tourism. But uh, if you, you know, you're going to go to the farther beyond the Earth, we have to clear that crowded area to minimize the risk. Good luck. Ten second trivia. Which of these man-made objects is the largest? International Space Station, Bingham Canyon Mine, an American football field, or the Spruce Goose? Utah's Bingham Canyon Mine is the biggest object on this list, but the ISS is the largest man-made object in space. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon, transporting critical research to enable living and working in Earth orbit and in deep space. Simon, wake up. I'm waiting for your commands. Don't you like it here with me? He's actually uh, floating there by himself, so I don't want to be Be nice, please. I am nice. He's accusing me of not being nice. <laughs> get a perfect 10 out of 10. This has been our biggest year ever, and today's last segment is dedicated to everyone who stopped by CNN Center. Twas 12 days before Christmas, and while I was working, I thought of the viewers who'd visited, lurking, here in the food court at the CNN building, where sometimes I'd be taking pictures and fielding their questions and comments, suggestions that matter, hearing the cheering and shouts and the chatter. So grateful for all y'all who came for a visit. I'm asked the best part of my job, well this is it. To the thousands who stop by and millions who view, you're a gift that keeps giving to us. So to you, we wish you a wonderful holiday season and thank you for being a wonderful reason to have this explainer show and its puns that despite all the moans and the groans, they're still fun. Some say they're pun funny, some say they're pun laughable. I'm still pun stoppable, pun daunted, pun flappable. This show is my favorite one to be in because of you, you're the best part of CNN. I'm out of time for the rhymes, but our official YouTube channel is now live. This is the first time we're doing this. YouTube.com slash CNN10, that's CNN10, is where you can subscribe to our show right now. Make sure to use that address for the official site, and we look forward to seeing you on this brand new way to watch the show. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, season's greetings to everyone. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.